Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to the Game Mode series. The Game Mode series continues. Last time we did, uh, let's say, the most um, basic five objective game modes with uh, Game of Thrones and uh, Honed and Ready. So this time, today, we will cover those, um, especially for beginners, not as easy to pick up game modes, which are the mission game modes, so to say, which is uh, Dark Wings, Dark Words and uh, Winds of Winter. So great to have you both again, especially for this particular guide, because um, as I said, I think especially beginners who pick up the game when they get get this additional mental load of now I have like a second deck and like a second hand or I have like another component right next to the tactic board where I have to look at and like recycle and switch out cards but I don't no, no spoiler but right if this happens um, there is an additional element of the game which is not easy especially for beginners or like casual gamers is not as easy to pick up. So great to have you too. Um, yeah. So um, again, we did um, the, the the overview over both uh, game modes are actually that we uh, also did uh, or again did a summary, and then we did a general approach to the game mode. And in the um, Winds of Winter one, we also have a. Um, like a visualization of everything, right? So yeah. So anything to add from you two? Let's start right in, I guess. All right. So we start with Dark Wings, Dark Words. So, so, so here we are. Um, so, Daniel, would be great to have you summarize this game mode. So, yeah, it's Dark Wings, Dark Words. Um, quick summary, it's a three objective game mode. So you have like real uh, objective. They are, um, as in Game of Thrones, contested um, uh, via, via ranks, right? Your wounds count as ranks and so on. We covered it last time. Um, they are not movable or anything. They will stay there and you can score from it. Um, as you mentioned, like both missions uh, tonight or today uh, have mission cards that we cover. And um, in this uh, particular case, you have always two active and two reserve missions. The active and reserve missions can be discarded and be replaced. This can be done like, um, yeah, there are two possibilities to do so. You can either use your uh, NCU and replace a zone to do that, or you can forfeit your commander's activation. And this is, uh, has some big impact on how you pick your list, for example, for this game mode. Also, obviously, the uh, reserve missions and the active missions um, change after, um, uh, after the round has ended. You will score from round one onwards, right? Um, meaning from the cards. So this is important, not from objectives, meaning from the cards, from the missions. And in general, you could say it's a very quick game mode um, because there are many possibilities to score um, missions and objectives. So it, it, it can easily happen that you go up to 10 VPs end of round three or something. And you could say that this game mode is in a way a little bit luck dependent because you never really know which mission comes up if you replace. And um, this can really swing or turn turn the game up on its head. And um, this is something which is um, characteristic for this game mode, which might be the reason why Simon decided to cycle this one out of um, the game modes which uh, they recommend for tournament play. Mm. We do think, though, that it's still a very, um, very good, though challenging game mode. Yeah, I can totally relate. Like uh, when we went to Poland to Hegemonalia, we had this in round three, I think. And I can totally relate to this particular thing that you said, you know, don't be shy to use your commander to do to 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 cycle and uh, or, or, or your NCU to cycle because I went in this uh, seven to eight heads up. So I had seven activations, he had eight. 
and uh, this card came up with when you um, put an NCU on the tactics board before you do, right? So I was not because it, I don't know, it was loud, like, and, 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 you know, round three and it was already tired on the first day and stuff. And I didn't really see it right in the, in, in that very moment. So basically my NCU stayed blank for the whole first round and second round, which, which was actually my, 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 I had awful on the side, right? I had, uh, all that stuff. So, uh, that was a little tough. Uh, so I can totally relate to use it, right? Use your commander to switch missions and uh, or your NCU just to get rid of it, what you don't need or what's not beneficial for you, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that we'll, we will cover that in the general approach, um, how to how to especially like, um, yeah, or to play differently from your normal um, game and game plan in, in this game mode. Yeah. Is there like a, um, when you say uh, we, we discard and replace, is there like a general, is there a hint or a tip what you would give beginners when, how can they like remember what, what, what cards are in play? What, what come up? Is it like, you know, what can they do on the table? Right. Is, is there anything? I mean, you have like 12 mission cards, right. In general. Yeah. And, uh, you, you should, um, like there are only 12 mission cards in the game. I mean, not in this game mode, but yeah. in general, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and you should, you should actually probably, if you want to have success, um, at least once sit down and, and learn them by heart, right? So that you at least know which are out there. And, and then, yeah, it's a little bit like keep, I mean, it's the same, like keeping track of your opponent's deck, like which card was played already and so on and so on. And um, I think everyone, has to find his or her own method how to do this properly. At least I have no like, um, yeah, receipt or something like how, how you, yeah, how you could do this. Um, maybe Martin, how, how do you do it in tournaments? Like, do you have a special way of remembering which cards are already out there or still yeah. in there? Yeah. You can just look it up because it's only nine cards, uh, 10, 11, and 12 are out and just look it up. and. This is an ongoing cycle. So when the deck is uh, gone, um, the, the the cards in the graveyard will come back into play. And just keep looking what's what could coming. And it's only important in, at the end of the game. At first, you only need to know which nine cards can come. But uh, when the game, let's say it's 8-8, eight, eight, then it's important. But special weight, as you said, just learn it. And it's easier because it's only nine cards in this game mode and uh, it's uh, the normal the normal ones the normal so, ones mm. yeah so like if you have the time before you replace you could always look up because it's open information like the discard pile of your opponent's uh, deck look it up um if if it's important in this case as martin said right yeah mm -hmm. all right so i think we're ready to let, take a look at the uh, general approach of dark wings dark words so martin please guide us through yes so as Daniel said, um, it's very important to be aware that you can score on round one because I played this game mode a lot and uh, this game can be lost in round one um, because when you're not aware of the mission cards, so you need to be aware of what is the mission here and what comes next. That's the most important mm, thing here to do. And you're not so focused on fighting you're more focused on on the mission cards and that's also very important play the mission it's i think in this mission it's, it's it's the most important of all mission to play the mission and you can lose a unit but if you can score two mission cards it's more beneficial to you mm. Mm. and another thing is you can cycle this mission cards and don't be afraid to do this. It's very, very important. Don't say, oh, I need letters, I need horses, I need this, I need that. Cycle the mission cards if they are not good for you with your NCUs and also with your commander. Uh, it's not important that your commander can fight one round if you lose the games. Just use it. And uh, from my personal experience, um, players know this NCU thing. They can cycle with the NCUs, but they always forget about that the commander can cycle. And this can give you a big advantage if your commander, if your opponent's commander has already activated and you have your commander 
um, left on the board. Mm -hmm. And for you beginners, we have a little not complete example list for picking the right or the wrong commander. As you can see here, there are good commanders for this um, game mode and bad commanders, bad commanders. I'm not going um, house to house, but good commanders for this game mods are guys like Stuer, like Harman Ullas, in, in case the, the generals who can sit and relax, stay an objective, who can do something without activating. Mm. And not so good commanders for this game mode are Gregor or Greyjohn for Starks is not such a good commander. Um, you can, if you have uh, questions for your personal commander, if he's not in the list, just let us know in the comments and we will answer it, especially for, let's say, is Obara good or bad? We will look mm. in the comments on this YouTube video and we'll give you advices if you like. Yeah, it's cool. It's like it's it's bringing back uh, the 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 stuff we talk about when we 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 clustered yeah. commanders, right? Yes. So you basically should, when we take a look at that, we should take we 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 try to pick commanders that are control commanders, defensive yeah. commanders, rather than aggressive like Carter Pike. Uh, uh, yes. Gregor commanders that need to do or to bring their benefit onto the battlefield to win a game, right? So, yeah, yeah. totally, totally, uh, totally agree. If I can chip in there, like sure. um, my, I remember my the game when I um, the final of the first German nationals, I think it was, where that was also Dark Wings, Dark Worlds, and I played at back at the time Mans commander, and Mans never left deployment zone in this game mode, <laughs> in this game, in this match, because he always stayed there and cycled. And I mean, Mans is a big good example because back then he was a very supportive commander. He gave his aura uh, and so on and so on. Yeah, and. Um, that shows that that was obviously a high competitive game. And um, yeah, I, I at this point valued um, exchanging the missions or cycling the missions every single turn higher than doing anything with my commander. So yeah. that says it all, I guess. Yeah, I've also cool. something to mention. Um, even it's, a, in my opinion, the most luck based game mode, you can do a lot with training. If you play this game mode, let's say five or six or seven times, you know when to cycle, you know which card is left, you know which card can win you the game. And here, training will get you the most um, benefits in this game mode. In Game of Thrones, it's, yeah, it's pretty vanilla. But here you can uh, have a big skill gap uh, and close it if you are more, more in, in shape, let's say in shape, than your opponent <laughs> when it comes to this game mode. Mm. Uh, I have a question or one more. Uh, so Daniel, when 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 you know in a tournament you play Dark Wings or Words, so obviously you can't like in Dark in in Winds of Winter you cannot like pick the missions yourself. So yep. So so what you do is basically build a list that can play Dark Wings Dark Words, right? You have the right commander, but the the question now is, um, do you? When this game mode comes up, you know, in round two, I, I will play Dark Wings or Words. You bring your list. Um, is this list also, um, or how do you design a list to to be able to play Dark Wings, Dark Words and yeah. other game modes? Like, is there any any secret sauce you can share how to play those, um, um, how, to, how to build those lists? Yeah, you bring up a good point, right? Um... Because you, if you go to a tournament, you need like answers for everything that could yeah. um, could happen to you. And game modes are a big part of this. But on the other hand, you also have to tag into uh, all the factions that are out there. And um, so you, you cannot have everything. And yeah. you cannot design a list for especially Winds of Winter. It doesn't make sense. But you shouldn't be by one game mode like completely thrown out of your comfort zone either. Mm -hmm. um, and... What this means for me is you need to have like general flexible armies and this commander type thing is something to keep in mind, right? Maybe you have one aggressive commander and one supportive commander. That's something you can do if your faction allows for it. Um, and then for this game mode, like if you go through the missions, which we will do uh, when we cover the next game mode a little bit more in detail, then you will see um, of what kind they are. And they basically encourage you to to build a versatile army 
You need you need something that can reach your opponent's deployment zone, which is mobility. You need something that can uh, maybe have more ranks than your opponent in close combat, which might be a solo unit with high wounds or just a very resilient infantry unit or something. And mm -hmm. I think by this, uh, this leads in general to build flexible, general, um, um, yeah, high, highly adaptable armies. Okay. So, so concerning this list, so when you know you play dark, so so your fa favorite commander for dark wings dark words is uh, Varamir. Is it's Varamir so? because yeah, it's Varamir. Because he can yeah. stay back and yeah, yeah. And, and it's not like, yeah, he can't stay back. He is still maneuverable. He brings um, also like high man highly maneuverable units with him, and he is only um, a couple of points. So if you pass with him, it's not that big of a deal. Um, in comparison to which would be the other the other opposite or the, on the opposite side, like imagine you're playing Mac and you want to cycle with Mac commander, right? That would be awful. And um, yeah. that's why I think Veromir gets a plus plus in our little uh, little list here. Got it. So like when talking to Martin on Martels now, not Starks, Martels, like the old Uller was was yeah. was way better for this, right? Because he had this. Um, uh, supply aid and it was very easy to get him back like basically what you said like like uh daniel keep keep, keep him in, in the in in the deployment zone just you know heal up recycle cards whatever he needs to do the new uler is a little bit different right due to um iron resolve and reinforcements is it right so um is he still is he still that that pick for dark wings are worse or could you because it says or we we are telling you guys out there the other ones are not really optimal to play this game mode, but is there any other commander within Martels where you would say uh, that could work too, right? It's obviously not Obara, but um, what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm thinking of uh, Doran Commander and his friend Ario Hota. Mm. Um, he brings a lot to the table, but Prince Doran and you as your commander and Ario Hota can be used. But there is no really need to. You can put him in a unit mm. of spearmen and let him sit back. And I would say, if you're looking for another good commander in Martels, and Martels, it's very hard because Oberon wants to go in, Darkstar wants to get in, Obara wants to go in. Mm. Um, and yeah, you have Ula or Doran NCU commander. He can be a good choice as well, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, like all, all Mattel commanders are pretty pretty aggressive <laughs> right yeah. now, so yeah. that's why. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah, Damon Sand. Yeah, he also wants to get a hint because of his war, uh, not war cry. Uh, uh, the healing when he he heals when he hits. Oh, yes. you mean um, um, Damon Sand? Yeah. Damon yeah, Sand. Yes. Um, what is it? Um, Relic cry. Relic cry. Relic, Relic yeah. cry. Relic exactly. Cry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 True. Yeah, okay, good. So um, I think if you guys have nothing to add to Dark Wings or Words, I think we're ready to push for um, uh, uh, Winds of Winter now. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Your favorite game mode. Already. Yes, my favorite game. All right, let's check it out after this. <laughs> All right, so first things first, before we talk about what's the most favorite game mode of, of whatever of the world, uh, you know, uh, Martin will guide us through the summary of this game mode. Yeah, it's a um, five objective game mode, but the objectives are not active all the time. You need to activate them. And each player has got six mission cards out of the 12. Yeah. And mission card 11 and 12 everybody got and you can choose four out of 10 and <clears throat> this is a very very slow mission because uh, everybody uh, plays start of round two one card so one card is left and this is you only score by uh, killing units or um, fulfill the mission and sometimes you play missions that are not fulfillable. So it's a very, very slow game mode. And one would say this game mode is the most often game mode when it comes down to round five or round six, because 
and even after round six, it's not uh, that one has got ten points. This game will easily can end seven to five or something like this. If the mm -hmm. cards are not in your favor, or if you're blocking, um, but I like this anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, like uh, enlighten us. Why is that your most favorite game mode? Uh, it's my most favorite game mode because um, when I can prepare for a tournament, I'm picking an army list. I play this list no matter which opponent I'm going to face against. And mm -hmm. I'm choosing my four mission game modes at home a couple of days earlier. The cards, you mean? Yes, the, the cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm choosing mm -hmm. the mission cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then when uh, we come to play, I know I pick, let's say, one, four, six, and seven, and I'm ready for it. And I like this thing that I can deal or describe the way I can win. When I play Starks, I often choose. I need to go. Uh, into the deployment zone of my opponent, and that's two yeah. points. Yeah. And this is because I have a lot of control about this game, and this is, I like the most, and that's why I like this game mode. And it's also, when you're prepared, I often see guys like, oh, 10 cards, what should I take? What, what, what do I pick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and I'm like, yeah, take your time. And I know, at this point, I know I have a big advantage, and the game even didn't start. So that is why I like this game mode the most. All right. So maybe we include, like, in the Discord server, we should include, like, an office hour where someone brings the list and says, okay, you have to pick me four cards now to have the most optimal... Yep. I'm just joking, right? We still have a private life and such, but I think it's a great idea. Maybe maybe later. All right. So that sums it up. The, sum the summary is done. It's summed up. So now we jump to the um, general approach, and uh, Daniel will guide us through. There we go. Um, obviously, the cool thing about it, about this game mode, is that you can tailor your own game plan, as Martin said, right? That's um, the cool part of it. And what this basically means is that you have to pick the right missions. That's important here, really. <laughs> it, can, uh, it can give you a bad day if you don't. And if you are sitting there or standing there like right before the game and you say, ah, come on, fuck it, I take these two. And uh, because maybe two, you two are always easy to pick obviously or, or like maybe three and then the last one you don't really know and so on and you pick something this can come back and bite you um round five and six so it's important to to really think about it and um to guide you through this we made a little tier list of the missions it's a generalization obviously and as martin said like the best thing is if you have an army or two armies like do this at home before the tournament and um, at least know what you would generally do. And then you can always review it in the light of what your opponent is, uh, who, your, who your opponent is, which faction it is and so on. But you should do this. And in general, one could say um, there are eight tier missions, which is mission one and mission four, center and tactics board. I will come um, back later to why tactics board is so important because there are some tricksy tricks here. Uh, that you can do um, but center is obviously like um, uh, a good thing to do if you are an army that cannot hold any spot on the table reliably, reliably then obviously don't do it right and yeah. then we have b tier and c tier missions and one could say like that you choose the b tier missions really also um, in uh, with a close look to your capabilities in your armies if you are an army that has strong token play obviously go for mission eight condition tokens if you're a mobile army go for enemy deployment and so on and so on if you have solo units uh, with high, like if you are giants or something go for miss, mission seven and so on and so on and the c tier missions is like all the things that block the tactics board or like specific zones on the tactics board revenge and opponent objective i think revenge might even be a b tier depending on um which arm you have like for free for, for example it's it's a good a good thing to pick but opponent objectives doesn't really yeah you can do this uh, if you want to because um sometimes it's good to have like a joker card to play um yeah, yeah. where you know at it's least my dropping. opponent cannot really score from it and so on and yeah. so on yeah. um but yeah other than that it's not of real use and the last thing to add here peter is a is a very good ncu still but uh, here he shines especially if your opponent um uses some C tier missions, which would be like block swords, horses, and so on and so on. 
Yeah, brings me to a question. I do not know what, what's wrong with me today that I asked for Martels uh, twice, but um, like C tier on Swords Horse and Swords Letters, is that the same for Martels or is it like a Martel player eager to, to get those cards? Yeah, for Martels, obviously. Um, I don't want my opponent to, to take the thoughts because of rising temperature and yep. unbent, unbound, unbroken. But um, I can set him a little trap here. I can play, let's say, rising temperature. And next turn, I can give him the choice. You can give me a point yep. and uh, remove the card. Or you can, uh, you don't give me a point, but then the card is still there. And obviously, rising temperature and unbent on one are pretty good cards. So it's little mind games. And mind games are always good when your opponent has to choose. Uh, I think for a Mattel player here, this is a this is a win-win situation. Um, if he's not removing the card, fine. If he's giving me a point, fine as well. Even when I have Doran, then it's a uh, free point for me. Doran NCU, the four-point NCU, give, can give me points, and I can fulfill my missions as well. But Daniel, a couple of minutes ago, you told us of some trick, and I'm curious, so maybe you can show us your secret tactic for this mission car a mission please yeah um not to to raise the expectations too high but um i think the the magic in this game mode comes with a mission 11 which basically says says like um if you have less victory points than your opponent right um, and if you reveal this mission you get a victory point and become first player so what this does is um, you can steal first player from your opponent, which is which is uh, big and important and and can uh, turn a game around. And now, normally we talked about which uh, which round you would would want to go first and so on. And here, what you can do is take um, let your opponent go first round one and go first second round. And um, you could even um yeah you could even uh, position you yourself in a way that you can profit from it and so on and so on and then you open with mission four and say okay you know uh, if i step on the tactic spot before you um you get a point and you do this and you donate a victory point especially to your opponent just to then be able to in round three when your opponent would go first um, reliably steal this and so you can create like a double tempo play where you go first in two consecutive rounds and um, from my experience on like top level competitive play like a lot of um, sneakiness entangles around this interaction and maybe then the opponent searches for a way to also give you a token back uh, like a victory point back so that you cannot do this and so on and so on and that's very interesting and um, you have to be um, careful not to overthink this or overtake this and, and, and like um, do too much, spend too much resources um, to just get the steal the first player because this will not automatically win you the game or anything. But it's something that you can do and um, a trick that you should be aware of. Awesome. All right. So uh, I think we go to the last part, the demonstration. Um, all right, so um, so we see four cards, and uh, maybe you can alternate. Uh, Daniel, let, let, let's start with you, and we can uh, get uh, uh, discuss those. Yeah, um, what we maybe should say uh, in the beginning is that um, we picked a Steyr army. Meta army, we have six infantry units, or let's say we have five infantry units and a chariot or whatever, right? And um, they are in general quite static, but you have um, a lot of units and you have six inch movement units um, with your trappers. And now the question is which, which missions would you pick? And uh, the first mission you definitely should pick once because it's an A tier mission. By the way, thank you, uh, Thomas. Um, who prepared uh, in, in preparation for this video, um, helped us with the, with the ranking a little bit and did some great work there. So mission one is an A tier mission and you have a good unit with your Steyr unit in the Thin Warriors to really hold the middle reliably. So that's a safe pick. Cool. So the second one would be? 
mission four? Yeah, mission four, as Daniel showed us, it's important for this uh, first turn stealing of the other player uh, and also an ATM mission. There's nothing more to say. Uh, just pick it every time and try to steal it. Yeah, it's it's a very, very strong card. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, third one would be mission six then. Yeah, as I just said, right? Um, you if, if you have a chariot or something, like even more, but um, you have a you have a very wide front line that you can create, and there will during this game, if you have Lady Well, for example, or even if you don't, there will be possibilities where like um, a trapper unit can maneuver march or simply march into your opponent's deployment zone, and that's a, a good thing to have, um, yeah, in your in your deck. And the last one, mission nine. Yeah, mission nine is something like a joker card. Um, for free folk, it's very good. They will lose uh, units because both units are very soft, and it's it's fine. Maybe they lose a unit with uh, the free folk card on it that you get another raider car, a raider unit, and then you can um, deploy two more victory points on the unit that have killed your unit, and the, then this unit is worth three points, and it's it's a card you can play when you have no idea or when the game state is a little bit shaky and tricky you can play this card um to um ensure that your opponent it's not scoring so many points all right so i guess that rounds it up um i have like one last question um concerning winds of winter so we learned there are certain clusters of uh, of um, uh, no you can you can you can basically prepare your deck and go with a certain list so you basically remove a certain you know level of mental overload when you go especially when you go to tournaments you know the list you know the missions so um, you can basically you know put all your brain onto what what is that list that comes against me um, I think the biggest recommendation I made this clear with with um with my example from hegemonalia i know this that that, that was dark wings are words but in general don't be afraid of this game mode in terms of use it right play 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 both game modes and i think i think especially winds of winter is something you can pick up quite quickly if you play it like five six seven times and especially when you prepare your mission cards beforehand you will pick up this game mode pretty quickly right um I, I i i think i think we want to see this in action uh, a little bit more uh daniel what i talked about i want to see that in action uh in a, in a video maybe um about how to steal first player in winds of winter maybe maybe we, we we take that offline or we ask the community if they want to see it but yeah and maybe that's a, a good opportunity for me to to make some little advertising because we are right mm -hmm. now running our community online tournament yeah. Um, on the Hits and Crits Discord. Mm -hmm. And um, Leon, Krellian, and I are regularly streaming games and commentating on games. And uh, Winds of Winter is still in the in the pool for, for the rounds mm. to play. So it will be played um, during the next um, two weeks. So if okay. you want to tune in, maybe that's, a, that's an opportunity for you. Good one. Yeah, I think, I think for me, that totally rounds it up on the two mission game modes. Um, you know, as as always, if anything was unclear, if anything was not like in your book, like not not understandable, just you know, just drop it down in the comments section. Reach out uh, to both of us in the Discord. Um, what whatever you need uh, to to uh, make this game mode yours, your favorite game mode too, as Iceman, <laughs> right? So um, I think there's one final thing that uh, also Daniel wants to ta talk about because it really relate really relates well to what we talked about today, which is our um, launch of the hits and crits uh, play mats. Yes, yeah, just um, um, a, a little note basically because um, the secret mission game modes they um, they bring further assets, assets that you have to organize during your game, right? And it's it's really um, it's really helpful to have something um, to do that for you or where, you know, the spaces are prepared. And this is where you probably could make use of the 
also pretty handsome in my in my mind. Um, it's in quits play mats, right? And uh, or basically, obviously, any play mat that is has this format and so on and so on. But we um, have these awesome play mats, and they serve very well for especially these missions, but for all other missions too, because they have yeah these um, pre-printed uh, spaces where you have to put your objectives and so on and so on. The, so they help you speed up all the preparing work um, that has to be done before you can start your game. Yeah, I think it's notable to say we, we did quite some research beforehand because yeah. we reached out to the community and asked a lot of players what they really need. So this whole, especially the tactics side of the of the mat is, is pretty much designed as the players needed. So we gave enough room for the reserve and the active missions. We gave a little bit of space for the additional tactic zones. And you have all, all the tools on the tactics mat to be the best player that you can be, right? Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. Check them out. Uh, we also have um, um, a Discord member um, rebate on the on the Discord. So you know, just jump in the Discord, check out the the Battle Mats channel, and um, maybe one of one of these awesome mats uh, can be yours. All right. So um, I think that rounds it up. Um, I do not know if Martin is still with us, right? Uh, yeah. So oh, you're there. Yeah, okay. I'm there. Uh, because your 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 picture's frozen, but. You know, you're still there, you hear us, that's great. So, that's it from us, guys. Again, as usual, all the feedback, all the likes, subscribe, all the comments on Discord, all the comments here, wherever you are, wherever you want to say, just reach out. We're happy to to, to answer your questions. And, um, yeah, I guess nothing more to say other than, until we meet again, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.